Hi everyone, this video covers the part of the A-Level Biology Required Practical 1 which talks about investigating the effect of a named variable on the rate of enzyme controlled reactions. So those named variables could be temperature, pH and in this case is the effect of substrate concentration. What I intend to do in this um, run through is to show you the actual experiment that my year 12 students did recently and to talk about some of the types of questions you might come up against when uh, answering this in an exam. So a bit of background first. Um, we're going to look at the effect of substrate concentration on uh, catalase. Um, catalase, as it says there, is an enzyme found in many tissues, both animal and plant, and it catalyzes the reaction of hydrogen peroxide, which is produced by your cells. Um, it breaks down, it breaks it down conveniently into water and oxygen. That oxygen is given off as a gas, so that's something that um, could be measured in this experiment. So here's the um, actual equation showing you the action of catalase. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the, the hydrogen peroxide which is the substrate in this case. We're going to look at the effect of different concentrations on the rate of this reaction. So for this experiment um, the students put pieces of card, we used uh, egg box, uh, pieces of an egg box, into an extract containing catalase and the card will soak up the extract containing the enzyme and then it's transferred, each card is transferred into a test tube containing a different concentration of hydrogen peroxide and then the time measured for the card to rise to the surface was made and that's quite difficult because you've got to actually get the piece of card to the bottom of the tube first and we'll discuss the problems that uh, the students had with that in a minute. So these are the materials the uh, students were provided with. Now, um, the students um, then were asked to uh, work out the percentage concentration of hydrogen peroxide. So they were given a uh, stock solution of hydrogen peroxide and then they did a serial dilution. So here's the uh, percentage concentrations and the volume of hydrogen peroxide compared to the volume of water to make up five boiling tubes, each containing 40 centimetres cubed. Uh, we also, I decided as well to add um, an extra one, okay, and they did an extra one at 5% as well. Um, so that was two um, hydrogen peroxide, two centimetres cubed in 38 centimetres cubed of distilled water. Once the students had sorted out the cereal dilution and got the six boiling tubes ready, they then uh, took a piece of card and used the forceps to dip it into the extract containing the enzyme. So uh, we used potato tissue uh, to uh, get the catalase and the students would be able to see the extract soaking into the card because we used egg box uh, card and it causes it to go darker. So here's so uh, here is one of our students uh, dipping the card into the catalase. There we go. Um, once it's dipped, you then would need to remove the card from the extract and shake off any surplus liquid. So uh, once they had the card, they would need to drop the card into the boiling tube. Now, uh, the problem that we had was that uh, the card seemed to float very easily. Uh, so I don't know whether that was the thickness of our card. Uh, as it didn't fall to the bottom of the tube. Uh, but we did, uh, if it doesn't fall to the bottom of the tube, which it didn't, you, they needed to push it down with a glass rod. Now you'll see the difficulties of doing that for, for anyone to do that. Um, but the, this is the main issue with this uh, experiment, is that the card soaked in catalase, once it hits the hydrogen peroxide, reactions are occurring. Uh, but we are, we, there is a large uh, volume within the um, boiling tube so we should be okay. Anyway so here we go so this one was at 80% um, so if we just run that and you can see the difficulties the students are having and I had a go and it was very very difficult to do um, and they eventually uh, get it and once it's down at the bottom they then would start the stopwatch 
now and then record the time for it to come to the surface. Okay, this next one, this I think this is 40%, okay, and you can see again, they put the, put the card down the bottom and then you can see there's a slower rate of reaction going on there. This next one is 20%, so you can see them taking out the Castellets. Um, should have dabbed it down, but never mind, but this is 20%, here we go. To watch it very carefully once it gets to the bottom. You can see it comes up at a slower uh, time. Lastly, this one uh, was at 5%, so if I just press play, So uh, much longer time, so it's, it takes uh, much longer the lower the concentration of hydrogen peroxide. Um, so that once the students have repeated this um, three times and they've done it at each concentration, they worked out the mean and then they needed to work out the rate of reaction. So rate of reaction is one divided by time. Okay. In seconds and they worked out the rate of reaction so I'll show you the kind of results they should have got they didn't necessarily get these results but this is what they should have got so here's a graph I prepared earlier um, if you are asked to, to draw the graph in an exam you need to make sure that both your axes are labeled you need to use appropriate scales and you need to select mean values from your data and the, you need to then present it as a line graph in this case. It's a line graph and also there's a line of best fit. So just to describe that graph, you can see that a low concentration, okay, um, you get uh, the rate increases, so it is increasing, okay, and then it remains constant. Um, you could say where it remains constant, in this case it remains constant at a concentration of approximately 42%. Just to make a quick point on um, what limits the rate of reaction, so between the hydrogen peroxide and certain percentages. Um, so for example, if you look at the, um, the graph here, so if I was to look at 30, I'll just write, I'll just draw that actually at 30, okay, that's the rate of reaction. Well, at this point here, um, Basically, you can see from this point to zero, okay, uh, so if I was to look at 10, so you can see that the factor that's uh, limiting the rate of reaction is the concentration of hydrogen peroxide, because as concentration increases, so does the rate. Once we get to this point around here, it starts to slow down, so there's some other factor affecting it, okay, um, and that's related to the fact that you reach constant regardless of the substrate concentration, because all the enzymes at this point here are going to be occupied. And I'm going to explain that to you now. So uh, when we have a low substrate uh, concentration, you can see the substrate molecules uh, here, okay, are fitting in a complementary fit to the active site of the enzyme and they're colliding with the enzyme, but as it says there, there's too few substrate molecules to occupy all the, of the available active sites. So therefore it's limited, and it says therefore only half the maximum possible for the number of enzyme molecules is available. So at this point here, it is limited by the substrate concentration. Now we get to a position as you increase the substrate concentration to where the graph uh, remains constant. So you can see it remains constant at that point there. 
Um, and this is the reason behind that is that all the substrate molecules in the act are, are in the active sites of the enzyme molecules. So enzyme substrate complexes are occurring, but no further rate of reaction can occur because at this point onwards, it is the enzyme that is limiting. It's not the substrate, it's the enzyme concentration at this point here. So um, we say that all the active sites are occupied at one time and the rate of reaction has doubled to its maximum because all the active sites are filled. And this last graph just shows uh, that you have excess substrates unable to find um, any free active sites therefore the rate of reaction remains constant. There's no increase. Okay, let's look at uh, some questions. Now, these questions, I will admit, are the from the old specification, as this was an old ISA test. Okay, you won't know what an ISA test was, um, but it was an investigative skills assignment. Um, and you used to do this practical and then uh, sit an exam um, related to this. But I think the questions are quite useful for you to be aware of. Um, as you know, you can be asked uh, these types of questions in your exam. So, first question says you were told to remove the card from the catalase extract and shake off any surplus liquid. Explain why it is necessary to shake off surplus liquid. Well, the liquid contains enzymes, so we want to try and control the same amount of enzyme each time. So um, it was trying to, as I said, it was a control variable. It wasn't a very good control variable because uh, even though the pieces of card were the same, the thickness might have been different. Also, uh, students dipped them in for different times as well. So that's something you would need to control. But in this case, you, it, the liquid contains the catalase enzyme and therefore you're adding the same amount of enzyme. Question two says that it would have been better if you kept temperature and pH constant in this investigation because those things can affect enzyme action. Describe how you would keep temperature constant. And this is the same uh, pretty much for a lot, lot of different experiments. And you'd use a water bath. Why would you use a water bath? Because um, you can control the temperature, but also to ensure the temperature stays the same, you would need to monitor that temperature with a thermometer or I'd probably use a data logger instead. Usually though, when you do use a water bath, the temperature does usually stay... Um, it doesn't fluctuate very much actually so but you must measure it and you must measure it more than once and then 2b it says describe how you would keep a ph constant well in biology you always use one thing and you use a buffer okay so um, a ph buffer and that's all you need to say and that will control the ph so um, in terms of repeating the measurements, um, I actually told the students to do it at least twice. Um, and it says, how many repeats did you carry out at a concentration of 100%? Explain why you carried out this number of repeats. So the minimum would be one repeat, um, because if you had very similar readings, there's no need to repeat it again. Or if you did two or more, because the first uh, repeat there was variation in the values or you're trying to identify anomalies. Okay, so as it says there, the mark is awarded for a reason that supports the number of repeats suggested. Um, so you're looking for results that are very similar, therefore you, you can do a minimum number of repeats. And then the next question goes on to say that in this investigation you found the time taken for the card to rise to the surface. Then it wants you, you to explain why this is a valid, that's a key thing, valid measure of the rate of reaction. Well, if our experiment had actually worked properly, we would find that um, what's making the card rise is the bubbles of oxygen. Okay, so therefore... Uh, we can say that if there's more oxygen released, then there's more bubbles, 
therefore the quicker the, the card will rise to the surface. So it's assuming that the oxygen, the, the amounts of oxygen affects the rate um, of reaction or how fast the card rises to the surface. So that's what it's getting at. Um, you can say the more bubbles of oxygen on the card, the faster it will rise to the surface and that will get you the full three marks, okay? But that is explaining why it's a good valid measure, all right? Because the more, more oxygen there is produced, the faster the rate of reaction. Here's the graph I showed earlier, so uh, you can see the results that you would get, and then it does say describe the results that the student ob obtained. So you're going to use this information uh, to describe, and you get two marks for that description. Now if they want two marks, you've got to say something about the curve, so the rate increases and, increases and then remains constant or plateaus. Um, when though, well, you need to include the data as well. So you say, uh, in this case, you can see it's a concentration of 42 where it plateaus. Okay, so if I just draw a line, a terrible line, dearie me, there we go, 42%. Uh, they would accept a va uh, values in the ranges of 40 to 44 because it's not completely clear on the graph. So what factor limited the rate of reaction between hydrogen peroxide concentrations of 0 to 30? It says give the evidence for your answer. So when you look at the, look at the graph, okay, from 0 to 30, okay, so what's limiting it is if we think that's the substrate concentration on the x-axis, it is the substrate concentration. So in this case, that's hydrogen peroxide concentration. And the evidence is that as the concentrations in, as the as the concentration increases, so does the rate at which the card card rose. Okay, you can have its positive correlation uh, between the concentration and rate as well. In this final question, a student it says a student carried out a similar investigation. He decided to carry out repeats using the same piece of card in the same tube. So each time the card reached the surface, they immediately pushed it back down again. They noticed that the card took longer to return to the surface. It says, explain why the card took longer to return to the surface. So we need to think about what's in the card. Well, what's in the card is the catalase enzyme, okay? Now, as um, it's pushed down. Obviously, the catalase enzyme is going to remain, but what's going to change? Well, um, what's going to change is the concentration of the hydrogen peroxide. Okay. Also, you could argue that some of the enzyme may get washed off each time as well, because because it's not been immobilized. It's not like immobilized enzymes in alginate beads. It's just on the surface of the card. Card. So either you could talk about less enzyme on the card, so the rate of reaction depends on enzyme concentration, therefore fewer bubbles or less oxygen is produced, or, and this is my preferred one, is that there's less substrate. So if there's less substrate, the rate of reaction depends on enzyme substrate complexes, therefore less is, is um, produced, therefore fewer bubbles, and therefore less oxygen. This brings us to the end of this video. I hope you found it useful. Um, I intend to do more required practicals from the A-level um, in the future, so please do subscribe and maybe turn on your notifications, and there'll be more to follow soon. Thank you very much.